Campbellton Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. Last week, in case you missed it, Jack Ray with a 413 to knock off fourth-seeded George Ashley with a 347. So today, Jack goes for his second week in a row, and he faces our number three seed, Glenn LeBlanc, who actually tied George Ashley in the roll-off at 663, as you see, but the uh, tie was broken by virtue of the fact that Glenn LeBlanc had the higher high single game in the roll-off, and that was what got Glenn the number three spot, as he had a 163 high game in the five-game roll-off. But Jack Ray to lead off the match, going for his second win in a row. He's looking at four horsemen left. That's the good news, but he's also got the 10 pin on the right. Oh, wow. And that's what cost him the shot. Boy, and he nearly made it, too. Instead, it's a nine box. Well, it's so rare that you see the four horsemen made cleanly like this. You know, but I was just going to mention that. Every, every time you see the four horsemen alone, they don't seem to go. <laughs> if you got an extra pin with it, the four horsemen seem to go all the time, and you leave that extra pin standing. Oh, uh, right in the pocket this time, and no on the nine pin. No four horsemen this time. Just the nine, and I'll take my chances with this one. <laughs> Double piece of wood out in front. Oh, yeah. Spare in the second for Jack Ray. Well, he got off to a quick start last week, and he mentioned uh, in the interview at the end of the show that was uh, something he was really trying to trying to concentrate on, was getting off to a quick start last week, and he had six marks in his first seven boxes, led virtually from start to finish. Glenn LeBlanc, the left-hander. Pulls the ball a little to the right, leaves himself the one, two, four, eight, and nine. Pull that one a little bit to the right, too. Glenn's last appearance here was in the uh, 1992 Tournament of Champions. He won a match in the first round against Stu Bergman, rolling a 4-12, and then in the next match, lost to Mike Morgan. Glenn rolled a 391, but uh, that didn't even come close to Mike Morgan's 455. Wow. Mike Morgan won three matches in a row that year before losing, uh, I take it back, he wore, won all four matches in a row, coming up from the number four seeded spot to win the tournament. And one of the guys he eliminated along the way was Glenn LeBlanc. But that was the last time Glenn was here, about four and a half years ago. He's had uh, some injury problems, he told me, with his back and with his knee, right knee. Had to kind of scale back on his bowling for a while, and now oh, he's back into it and healthy again, and back with us here on the winds of New England. And he starts with a nine and an eight, 17 after two. Jack Ray, two pins plus the bonus ball for a lead early in the match. The winner of this match will come back next week for the semifinals against Paul Berger from Hopedale, Mass, our number two seed. The runner up today will take home fourth place prize money, $175. Four on the spare for Jack. Good second ball, leaves the five and nine. And the nine box. So Jack really doesn't take full advantage of that spare in the second. Last week he had 13 spares and four strikes on the way to that 413. Speaking of strikes, if by some chance you missed our season premiere last week, a new wrinkle this year on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, the NHCBA sponsoring a triple strike pool as Jack gets the spare in the fourth. His second mark over on lane 31. Barely, nearly picked just the three pin out of there, left the five. He had a strange look in his face like, I almost missed that. The triple strike pool goes up by $50 each week until somebody rolls a triple strike. This week it's at $300. Well, it looks the worst than it is. He's got a couple pieces of wood behind. The one and the three should help. And yes. Glenn records his first mark. Spare in the third. 
I see a replay, no problem with that one as long as he's on the head pin. Move to lane 31 and he'll fill that spare. Just catches a bit of the head pin and the five falls the wrong way or he might have had a strike. Glenn takes the lead with that nine fill. Now, this looks like it would be automatic too. However, that wood is way out in front of that A pin. Oh, it was able to drive it straight through. You're right, Dan. I wondered if maybe that wood in the back might cost him the shot, but he was able to drive it right through. So two in a row for Glenn. Third and fourth frames. Jack Ray working on a spare. Just five this time. Both bowlers turn the ball over. Jack Ball wants to break a little bit from right to left. And of course, Glenn being left hand, it's going to break from left to right. Jack will take eight. 55 half here in game one. I'm sure he's not happy with those two fills and four and five and already left four pins standing. He didn't leave many standing last week at all. Slam right in the one three pocket and look at this, the five, eight and 10 and no wood. Well, if Jack had any problem last week, Dan, it was filling marks. He had a three, a six, a two, a five. Oh, almost. Almost cut that into the 10. But he had so many marks <laughs> and so many groups of marks last week that he didn't have to worry too much. That's a nine box. So two open frames for Jack Ray and Glenn LeBlanc steps up already in the lead and working on a spare. Or he will be in the lead, presuming he gets more than one on this fill. He goes through the middle. Flush on the head pin, just five. Candle pin stars and strikes brought to you by the fine folks at Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash. Choose your dream. Tri-State Megabucks. Eight bucks for Glenn. He grabs the lead by four pins over Jack. Opposite of nine box. Starts at the very back of the approach. Takes a four step delivery. Four horsemen left, one, two, four, and seven. Now we'll see if these go, if he hits the one, two. Uh, just missed the head pin. So he can't take advantage of the two opens. Ten for Glenn. Puts his lead at five after six boxes. Don't forget, next weekend, more great bowling here on the Winds of New England, Saturday at noon from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, our new home for Candle pin skins. That'll be next Saturday at noon. And of course, next Sunday at noon, right back here on Stars and Strikes, the winner of this match against Paul Berger next Sunday at noon. Oh, look at this. Oh, does it go? That would have gone. It, it came in contact with a second piece of wood that's now laying in the left-hand channel. Otherwise, that was gone. What a shot by Jack Ray. But doesn't get the kick off that second piece of wood. I don't think Jack stayed on his knee long enough. If he had <laughs> stayed on his knee longer, he might have gotten take, it. Take a look at this. Splits the three and the six. Three takes out the four, seven. Right there, it was coming. Yep. And that second piece of wood slowed it down. A little light on the head pin. Both of Jack's marks have come over here on lane 31. And, well, he may have a shot at this. The seven and the nine. A double piece of wood in front of the nine and a single one in front of the seven. Well, that other piece to the right I, moving back doesn't help. No, I think you're going to have to go to the piece of wood in front of the seven because it's out further. Let's see. Yeah. No. 
Tough shot. Of course, now that you say that, watch what happens with these two. Uh, you know, usually <laughs> it flips over and you say, well, maybe I should have played that one. <laughs> Hindsight, but again, Jack has opened four, mark, uh, four boxes in a row now. Chance for Glenn LeBlanc to increase his lead, now at five. Glenn LeBlanc was living in New Hampshire the last time he was with us, now lives in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Works for Micron Medical Products in Fitchburg. Four horsemen to the right, piece of wood in between the one and the three, and again, missing that object pin. In that case, would be the head pin. Ten box. Matching the ten put up by Jack Ray. I think both bowlers are thinking, boy, if I could only get a couple marks and get control of this match, but at this point, no one seems to want it. And that's a good looking ball by Glenn. But nothing touched the five pin. Let's see where this wood settles down. Could be a roadblock for him. Well, it's a clear shot at the five. It's not done yet. Right there would be nice. <laughs> there is no good. No. Nope. <laughs> and it almost seems to know. Just going to tease you. I'm just going to give you a little look at the five. <laughs> then I'm coming back in front of it. Also, keep in mind that view that you're getting uh, from our camera position is not straight on to the pins. Yeah. So that piece of wood actually right now gives him plenty of room to go by. Actually, you could use it now, too. Yeah. Yep, either yeah, way. Nice little guide. Very well done. And then the eighth spare to Glenn LeBlanc. His third. He has the lead for now over Jack Ray. Jack is right back in the pocket, and he'll look at the six and nine. I say this every time Jack Ray joins us. He's, he's about the uh, purest as you can get as far as the approach and delivery. Upper body does not move. That would cost him that time. Deflected the ball away from the nine. Jack trying to walk that one off. He's been robbed a couple of times. If you watch the upper body of Jack Ray, it doesn't move at all. Nine box for Jack. Five open frames in a row. Very unusual for Jack Ray. On the head pin, but look at the split. Three, six, ten on the right. But also the four pin all alone on the left. Ideally, split the three six. Oh. Heard the crowd's reaction. Almost cut that three into the four. With the ten, a 103 for Jack Ray. Well, he's going to find himself behind after game number one. How many? Well, depends on what Glenn does the last two. Working on a spare down the eighth. Oh, right in the pocket, and a nine drop. Second in a row for Glenn. A nine drop and leaving just a nine pin. A clear shot. It doesn't want to go too far to the right, though, and cap that wood. Oh, oh no, yeah. you heard him. <laughs> so a missed opportunity there, and it's a nine box for Glenn LeBlanc, but his lead is in double figures for the first time. It's now 14. And he's opposite a 10 box here in the 10th. You can't help but think you can't make those kind of mistakes against the likes of Jack Ray. Oh, right back in the pocket. Oh, oh yes. boy, was that a big miss? Strike in the 10th, first strike for either bowler today. Right, Glenn turned around and looked at his mom in the audience saying, I know, I know. I shouldn't have missed that single. <laughs> Always happens, though. You miss a single, it's almost automatic. Eight, nine, strike in the next ball. Make you feel real good about missing it. Going for the double. Nope. One, five, and nine. Glenn will try and get what he can here on this fill. He'd be happy with six or seven on this fill, I'm sure. No, and right, he gets the bonus. Eight. Fine out there. 
An eight fill and a 125 opening game for Glenn LeBlanc. So he will carry a 22 pin lead into game two against Jack Ray. And when we come back, if you'd like to get involved in our bonus ball contest, maybe win yourself some cash and a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries. Stick around, we'll tell you how you can do that when we return in a minute. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. Before we continue, a reminder about our bonus ball contest. At the end of each show, our winning bowler throws one ball. If the pinfall matches the number of pins on your postcard when you send it in, you win the money in the jackpot, and you and the bowler each win a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries and our good friend Bob Perella down in Medway, Massachusetts. But you can't win if you don't send those postcards in. So include your name, address, and a number from 1 to 10. Send it on a regular size postcard only, please, to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. $90 in the jackpot at the end of today's show. Hopefully we have your card already. If not, send it in. You get a chance to uh, win some cash, win some new bowling balls. We'd love to see you be a winner. Glenn LeBlanc to start game two with a 22-pin lead here on Stars and Strikes. Well, you can see he moved the four-pin, but it didn't go over. It doesn't make it any easier. That's a six pin. Uh, right, six yeah, pin. six pin. He moved the four pin too, he knocked it over. Yeah. <laughs> he works it out for a 10 box. Glenn with four marks to this point, three spares and a strike. No, Glenn thought he was going to have a half Worcester on that ball and managed to steal a few more. One, three, six, and nine. Piece of wood way to the left. Shouldn't come into play at all. Let's see if he can cash in on this break. Yes. yes he does. Great Sp shot for Glenn. Spare in the second. Not an easy shot. Jack Ray, after averaging just a little under 138 in his three games last week with just a 103 to start today. And now he looks at the 710. I should say, though, that uh, it was a very hard luck 103 in that first game. Jack got robbed on a couple of shots that it looked as though he had made. 710, Piece, couple pieces of wood. No. Nope. That'll be a nine box for Jack as that ball clipped the piece of wood in the channel. Jack moves over to lane 31. And he's opposite a spare. Jack only has two marks today. They were both right here on lane 31. That ball he pulled a little bit, but it's getting better. The one and the seven. With one piece of wood behind the head pin. Another one coming now. That one may roll away, yep. But the piece of wood that's there may help him. Absolutely. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Lined up perfectly to cover the seven pin. Jack takes advantage. So that's three marks for Jack now, all on lane 31. Len LeBlanc filling a spare with nine. Solid nine pin, leaving just the five. He's in 29 after two. Piece of wood now rests against that five pin. Trying to make it two in a row. Yes, he does. Just missing head pin to the right. One, two, nine, ten. Candlepin Stars and Strikes brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. Oh, 
Ooh, seven box for Glenn. Gives him 52, 52 through four. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Jack right now working on a spare in the second. On the head pin, not the Philly wanted. Six. Three, five, six, ten. Trying to make it two in a row. And oh, yeah. Made it look easy. So Jack finally solves lane 32. And two marks in a row. First time this week. Off target that time, oh, but, but watch on. out. Oh, look out. Oh, my. How about this? Not a bad break. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Jack was owed at least one of those. <laughs> Yes. What happened in the first game? I almost want to miss the front piece of wood, but no, he just plows Carries right it. into it. Three marks in a row for Jack Ray, and that will take us to a timeout. Just about halfway through this match, Glenn LeBlanc in the lead by 20, but Jack Ray working on a spare. We'll be back in Wyndham after these words. You're looking at Glenn LeBlanc leading right now in this match. Trying to even up that overall record at five and five. He drills right through the middle. Leaves himself the spread eagle plus the eight pin in the back. Good effort. Nine box for Glenn. It's going to be spurts or momentum swings back and forth, and Jack is in the middle of one right now. To Glenn to put some marks up here to. And he starts to press a little bit when Jack makes a run at him, and vice versa. So this match is a long ways from being over. And among the interested spectators here at Park Place Lanes for today's show, next week's challenger, Paul Berger, our number two seed, checking out the competition. Uh, he looked like he was a little heavy on the head pin, but I thought he had, might have caught enough of it to make the spare. He moved the eight pin off the spot, works it out for a 10, but two more open frames for Jack Ray to work on, trailing by 20. And Jack working on three marks in a row here. Big fill, and he'll take all of them. The biggest fill you can get. Strike on spare, four marks in a row now. Jack has now cut the lead to just nine pins. Wow, well, for that five pin to go, but. Eventually does. First strike of the day for Jack Ray. A chance to take over the lead. Oh, look out. Another solid first ball there by Jack Ray. If he can convert this, this will give Jack the lead halfway through the second game. And he's got it. Five marks in a row and how quickly things turned. I almost feel it start to shift. Now it's up to Glenn to try to bear down and get back in the groove, put a couple marks back up there. Oh, boy. Oof. You're so much concentrating in that situation on getting the head pin and to have that happen. You get too much of it, and that's what happens. Oh, oh what an effort about there. That shot? Now, he may not have made that shot, but that's a boost in confidence right there almost making a spectacular spare. 
Yeah, you could uh, count that as a very good box. That's a very good 10 box right there for Glenn LeBlanc. Now he just wants to get that first ball in the pocket. Yeah, Glenn's been here before, so he knows what it takes. You know, you know he missed the head pin there, and that's the, probably the best leave he's had in the last three or four boxes. <laughs> and that's not great. One, two, and then the triangle, four, seven, eight. Gave it a run. Uh, again, two in a row now. Could have very easily had the two marks. Well, last game it was Jack Ray just missing out on a couple of spare opportunities. Uh, Glenn missing a couple of a row, a couple in a row there that he probably deserved. From 22 pins down, Jack Ray now leads by one plus this fill. And as you just saw, he's looking for his sixth mark in a row. It will not be easy. Jack is at 100 through six. What will he do here? He's going to play the three. Glenn breathes a sigh of relief. That storm is over, at least for this box. But it did some damage. Three spares, followed by a strike and another spare. 109 through seven. And Jack now leads by six overall. Oh, Jack lost that one to the left. Just turned that one over a bit too much. Still, the way he's throwing, you wonder if he might make this. Turn that one over a little bit too much also. Full on the head pin. And a nine. So two open boxes there for Jack Ray. And the lead stays at six. Oh, oh big strike. Helps. Glenn LeBlanc with his second strike of the day. Here's a replay. And this is his pocket. Ball's breaking from left to right. And that one two pocket, he just cuts right through the 10 pins and gets a lot of pin action coming in that way. Much needed strike right there. Ah, a little light that time, but you know, possibilities of wood swinging around. The three, seven, and nine with three pieces of wood around the three pin. Oh, you just gotta help the ball stays in play. Unless one of those pieces of wood's gonna come from the right side while all the way across for the seven. But that's the pin he's gonna need some help on. Oh wow. Well, Cap the wood, got nothing. Oh, oh how about boy. that? Wow, well, a tough luck game for Glenn LeBlanc there coming down the stretch, but he did get the big strike in the ninth, and that will help. You see the replay. That would help deflect the three pin into the seven. That strike will force Jack Ray to mark in order to maintain his lead going into game three. And Jack throws a big nine drop, leaving the nine pin. Converts it for the spare. Eight marks for Jack Ray. And Jack retakes the lead with a resounding strike on spare. You can see picks on the one two pocket at that time, but goes strike on spare. Jack at 148 plus two balls. Pull that one, half Worcester. Yeah, 
That's the oh. second ball back in there, though, for a spare on strike, converting the half Worcester. 40 pins in the last two boxes for Jack Ray, and that gives him a 19-pin lead in the match, 261 to Glenn LeBlanc's 242. One game to go here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back in a minute. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Jack Ray has a 19-pin lead, and he will lead off in game two. Jack going for his second straight win here on Stars and Strikes. Paul Berger awaits the winner of this match next week. Missing the head pin to the right. As Jack gets ready to <clears throat> throw his next ball, I would like to bring in kind of a sad note here. If any of you that are familiar with well, when the lanes were called Sandy's and now Park Place lanes, um, one of the fixtures around here for so many years and such a great guy, Bob Bovier, the head mechanic and uh, chief cook and bottle washer. He was in excess of 33 years involved with Sandy's and Park Place lanes, passed away a couple weeks ago. So our condolences go out to his family and it's gonna be sorely missed. Absolutely, he, uh, he was the man that would often greet our Winds of New England crew when they get here early in the morning to set up for a taping session and certainly our condolences to the Bover family. Jack Ray waiting for this piece of wood, looking at the four pin. That's a good line. I just heard someone say that wood was moving and they said, go camping, get out of the way. And <laughs> That's good. I remember that one. Single pin spare for Jack Ray. Two weeks, he hasn't missed a single pin for a spare. Glenn LeBlanc. Oh, wow. Boy, that looked better than that. Certainly did. You, you wonder, is there a little too much speed? Not enough? Uh, just unlucky because the ball was right in the pocket and leaves himself the 5, 8, and 10. See if he can make up for it by taking advantage of this wood. See if it's angled properly. Uh, really nope. Good. Almost there. better off with it out, without the wood there because you can cut the 5 into the 10. Ten box for Glenn. Uh, this match is turned around. See Jack Ray down by 22 and now he's up by 18. Another right one. On the head pin and another split. 6, 7, 10. Piece of wood in front of the 6, 10, also one right next to the 6 pin. I don't know if either one of them can get the 7, but it's his only shot. Let's see if we can get some help. Ooh. Dan, we want to take a moment to welcome a brand new sponsor here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes this season, the folks at Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Happy to have them aboard as a participating sponsor here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes and on Candlepin Skins. In this 1996-97 season. Jack Ray pushing that lead up over 20, and he'll shoot at another single pin. This is his fifth single pin opportunity for a spare. It's four for four so far. Make it five for five. And he's got it in cruise control again. Took him a while to get in gear this week. Last week, right from the start. Oh, oh. great pocket hit. That was one of those strikes right from the moment he put the ball down in the lane. Just a perfect pocket hit. 
three marks in a row for Jack Ray. Glenn has got to be thinking strikes. <laughs> or maybe thinking of break. Yeah, this is the third split in a row hitting the head pin. Yeah, three, six, seven, no wood. And again, looked like he was pretty well in the pocket with that ball. Nope. Don't forget, coming up at the end of the hour, our bonus ball contest, which will be worth $90 this week. And a seven for Glenn, as he missed once on each side. Glenn LeBlanc's lead was up as high as 26 pins at one point. Oh, and there finally. is the strike he needed. Finally. So both bowlers put up strikes in the fourth. And that could create a little excitement when we come back for the rest of game three here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. Jack Ray getting ready. He's got three marks in a row. He had five in a row at about this point in game two. Working on a strike right now. And oh, it was close to a double. A little more excitement now when the, when the bowler has a strike up there because of this triple strike pool. Spare on strike, four marks in a row for Jack Ray. 14 in the match. He keeps going at this rate, Dan. He may end up with more marks and a higher score than last week. And he started with a 103. Yeah. That one got away from him a little bit. It looked like he might have bounced it. But he got away with it. One, two, and four left. Trying to make it five marks in a row. Two spares on either side of a strike. Nope, nope not this time. Oh, nice 10 bucks, converting the one and the four. 95 through six. Uh -huh. yeah. Glenn LeBlanc trailing by 51 would love to throw a double strike right here. Working on one. Oh, man. Oh, wow. That was, that was as good as the last one when he threw the strike. But this time he gets the six pin and the seven, eight, and nine also. Uh, I can play the wood to the to the left, but I almost think I'd want to go at the six pin. So Glenn can't take full advantage of that strike. Not for lack of effort, though. No. That ball was right in there. He's had several of those this game. Glenn now will shoot at the triangle, the four, seven, and eight, plus the 10 pin. And there is wood in the middle. Getting uh, spare opportunities that uh, in our 13 years we haven't seen. Oh. <laughs> He's he making looked, a few of them has, too. Has he looked at anything in this game that hasn't been a split? I know. Well, fine shot. Fine shot is right. He made it look easy that time, but obviously it was not. Oh, Jack Ray with another strike on lane 32. That should assure him of another 400 triple. Can you see the replay? Nice and tight on the 1-2 pocket. He needed a 139. He's already going to be in, uh, well, let's see, well over 100, somewhere in the 110s when this fill is all over. Boy, that close to a double strike. He's got both pins rocking. <laughs> The three and the 10 for another spare. Oh, no, oh, and it's still oh. rocking, <laughs> but nothing touched it. Well, Jack does not need another mark in order to get 400 now. With two boxes to go, he's at 124. And Glenn LeBlanc can be thinking only one thing right now. He's working on a spare, but he must have strikes. 
Yeah, he's probably be shooting to pick up that triple strike pool. Well, a triple strike would not only win him the pool, but yeah. get him right back in the match, too. Even a double strike would make it interesting. Oh, Let's watch say. out. Oh. It, that's what he's been doing wrong all this game. He's <laughs> been hitting the head pin. <laughs> Save the head pin for last. That's right. Misses the head pin, and that's all he leaves standing. Going to make it two marks in a row. He does. Glenn is now four for five on single pins for spares today. Boy, but he may think back to that one he missed. In game one, it came between two other marks. He could have had a larger lead at the end of game one, but the way Jack Ray caught fire in game two, it might not have mattered. Just three on the fill this time. Not to mention that the fire never burned out here in the third either. It just kept on burning. He's already at 124 through eight. Jack Ray, of course, I'm talking about. And it's gonna just about do it. Now the lead at 51 right now, so Jack Ray will undoubtedly close out Glenn as he steps up here for his final two. Next week it uh, gets a lot easier for Jack. A <laughs> <laughs> guy named Paul Berger comes in. Paul Berger not wasting any time to make up for the fact that he missed the Tournament of Champions for the first time, uh, yeah. the first time last spring. And he comes into this series as the number two seed, and we will see him next week against Jack Ray. Nope. Jack yeah, punching through the center got a little better. And it's going to set up for another spare. Wood moves around. Already at 140. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, it had to go. Oh, no. It had to go, didn't it? <laughs> How did that stay up? Well, Jack will have to settle for 16 marks this week. And two pins less in his total. A 4-11 for Jack Ray. With an opening 103 game. How did that stay up? Everything went past that eight pin. Len LeBlanc now could still win himself $300 if he should throw a triple strike here. Well, last week, Jack Ray had six marks in seven boxes to start the match against George Ashley. This week, he had five consecutive marks early in game two, and that was really what turned it all around for him. And then just to let somebody know that it wasn't a fluke, he came back with four consecutive marks in, the, uh, in this last game. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Two spares, a strike, and another spare. Oh, nice spare for Glenn LeBlanc in the 10th. That will be his 11th mark of the day. The four, five, seven, and eight. Glenn at 350 overall, plus this ball. And make it a six fill for a 114 and a three game total of 356 for Glenn LeBlanc. But it's not enough. Jack Ray, well over 400 for a second week in a row, makes it two wins in a row. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and have our bonus ball contest when we come back. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Our congratulations to Glenn LeBlanc, $175 check for finishing fourth. I know it took you a while to get back here, various injuries and so forth. Uh, probably not the, the score you wanted to put up, but especially the way Jack is bowling right now. Jack came on the second and third string, and he definitely deserved it. I'm just very glad to be back. And I'm sure we'll see you again soon. I hope so. All right, Glenn, <laughs> thanks very much. Congratulations. And now let's have Jack Ray step up to try and get our winner in a bonus ball contest. Now worth $90. Jack came uh, within a pin last week of getting a winner. Let's see. Oh, he's tried that six again. That's the same number he tried last week. Dan's going to narrow in on one card. One card only, please. And you missed by one again. 
John Johnson from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. John's guess was seven, and so John will be sending you a consolation gift. And Jack, slide in here real quickly. Not much time to talk, but another 400. You can't be unhappy with that. Well, I hope I have another one because against Paul Berge, you know, he likes to throw <laughs> 400s in this show. So We'll see you next week. That Thank should you. be a great one. Okay. Definitely. All right, Jack Ray with his second straight 400. He started late today, but he still got up to 400. That's right. And it doesn't seem fair. He throws two 400s, and now we throw Paul Berger at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be Jack Ray against Paul Berger next Sunday at noon. Don't forget, Saturday at noon, Candlepin Skins from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great week.